please remind me uh, at the end of our meeting that I should mark attendance? OK, sir. OK, at the end of the meeting, OK? Before okay, sir, we discuss. OK, sir. OK, perfect. And who is going to volunteer? I would like uh, one of you to actually to keep yourself unmute so that I can communicate uh, with you. So who is going to volunteer? Or do you want me to pick a random number and then pick a random person? Sir, either I'll volunteer or you can pick a random number. You can volunteer, actually. I appreciate okay. that. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah. OK, so before I proceed uh, to today's uh, lecture, let's have a candid discussion. OK. I actually uploaded a video uh, yesterday and I was hoping that you will watch it. OK. Uh, when I saw the statistics this morning, only seven views. OK. Out of those seven views, oh, so it's 30 views now. So I'm not sure how did it uh, jump to 30 views because like 10, 15 minutes ago, I watched the statistic. There were only seven views. OK, so the whole point is today's lecture is actually uh, heavily dependent on whatever I taught uh, in my last lecture. OK, so does it make sense? So let's say if I upload a video, does it make sense? If my expectation is that you would uh, watch it, let's say in five, six hours, maybe 10 hours, anytime before the next lecture. Does it make sense, uh, Azam, do you think? Um, yes, sir. Okay, because every lecture is dependent on my last lecture. So today's lecture, I'll be using some concepts that I covered in my last lecture, okay? Uh, uh, but even then, let's say, feel free if you if you want me to repeat uh, some of the concepts for you, I can I can do that. Uh, but please, the whole idea is whatever I'm I'm teaching today. Of course, I'll be using some concepts that I covered in my first, second, and third lecture for uh, this chapter. Okay, so let me share my slides with you. So yesterday, if you remember, there are few limitations of group specific uh, uh, rates. OK, so we use capital asset pricing model even like for uh, setting group specific rates. But of course, there are some limitations. And this is one of the most important limitations. So CAPM, what it does, if you remember, how do we estimate CAPM? So the return on any project. So let's say the project is labeled as, let's say, J. OK. It's the risk free rate plus the excess return, which is RM, OK, minus RF. So this part is actually the excess return. This is excess return. And then, of course, you have to multiply it with beta. And this is project specific data. I mean, group specific data, I'm sorry. So one of the limitation is that whenever we are, we are using CAPM, of course, it takes into consideration only the, is it systematic or unsystematic risk? So does this data capture systematic risk or unsystematic risk? Question for you. So let me pick a student. Can Hamna tell me this? Is it systematic risk, Hamna, or is it unsystematic risk? Is she online? Hello. OK, let, let me tell you something, by the way. In some books, it's called systematic, OK? In other books, it's called systemic. 
but it's, it's it's the same thing. It's 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 nothing different. Okay, different term. Okay, so is it Azam? Can you tell me is it systemic risk or is it unsystemic risk? Uh, so it is systemic risk. It's systemic uh, risk. Perfect. Because the KPM method does not consider the unsystematic risk. Perfect. Okay, so that is one of the limitations. So if you remember in my last lecture I covered, but I'll, I'll tell you again that the total risk is actually, actually your systematic risk. Okay, there is no rocket science to it, and then unsystematic risk. Now, one of the limitations of using KPM for group specific rates, and of course uh, for uh, individual projects, is that it does not consider unsystematic uh, risk because uh, it uses only the systematic part of it. So, this is a typical NPV profile. Okay. So NPV profile is what, okay? You plot all the net present values against for different discount rates, okay? So let's say if the discount rate is 10%, of course your NPV is between 10,000 and 20,000, most likely it's 15,000, okay? So 15K, okay? But let's say if the, um, if, if it jumps to, I would say this one is to 10, 15, I would say this is around 12%, okay? I'm only estimating visually, okay? So the NPV drops down to 10,000. Of course, if you increase the discount rate, discount rate increases, your NPV goes down, okay? Why? Because this discount and NPV, they, they are inversely proportional, okay? So they, they move in opposite directions because this one is appearing in the denominator. Okay, so if I increase this, of course the NPV will go down, okay? This is, if you remember from chapter number 13, this is IRR. So why is it IRR? Because at this rate, your NPV is zero, okay? So this is a typical NPV profile. So in total risk, Whenever actually, in a total risk scenario, whenever you evaluate a project, sometimes it's not a bad idea to do sensitivity analysis, okay? So what will happen, let's say, if the discount rate jumps up? And what will happen, let's say, if the discount rate goes down? Why would discount rate, let's say, go up? Discount rate. Okay. So what the discount rate tell you? It, it tells you the risk associated with the project. Okay, the risk associated with project. Okay, so of course, sometimes as an analyst, you are unable to capture uh, the total risk of that uh, project. So what, what do you do? You do some sensitivity analysis. Uh, you say that, okay, what if I underestimated the risk? Okay, so suppose if your estimated risk is here, okay, this is what you estimated. It's here, okay. What happens, let's say, if the risk is actually here, okay? And what will happen, let's say, if I overestimated the risk? Of course, if you do sensitivity analysis and then you see how responsive is the net present value, okay? So for example, what if this NPV profile, this line is a little bit flatter? If it's a little bit flatter, it means that these are not there to changes in uh, discount rate, okay? Then you will not be too, too worried about, let's say, underestimating the risk or overestimating the risk, okay? Because the line itself, it's flatter, it's not that responsive, okay? But whenever your NPV is more sensitive, of course, then you have to do some sensitivity analysis just to get a feel of it, okay? So what will happen, let's say, if my discount rate, in other words, if my risk is underestimated or overestimated? Okay. So project evaluation based on total risk, 
okay and the approach is risk adjusted discount rate approach okay it's a r a d r so the required rate is increased or decreased relative to the firm's overall cost of capital for projects or groups showing greater or smaller risk okay average risk so again it's just like the sensitivity analysis okay so your required rate is either increased or decreased okay and the individuals or or the professionals who are responsible let's say for evaluating the projects what they do they also hold extensive talks with other land managers or the people who are involved let's say um, in the field okay so who are most closely related to those uh, projects and sometimes those uh, professionals who are evaluating who are evaluating projects they adjust they adjust the vac okay either upward or downward okay so let's say if they are convinced that the project is not that risky of course they may go for uh, a downward revision they can uh, they can lower the cost of capital so whenever the cost of capital is lower because in my yesterday lecture i already mentioned that it's it's like the hurdle rate okay so if you remember from chapter number 13 okay so we compare the irr with the hurdle rate if the irr is more than the hurdle rate we accept that project so where is important because it gives us an idea it's it's like a benchmark it's like a cut off rate okay so whenever the project managers or the analysts whenever they discuss with other uh, uh, colleagues uh, who are directly related with similar projects okay uh in in light of that uh, discussion the professional uh, who is actually analyzing those projects they may revise the vac either upward or downward or they may not even change it it's up to them okay so it really depends on the 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 kind of discussion that they are having another approach is actually the probability distribution approach okay so acceptance of a single project with a negative npv depends on the dispersion of npvs and the utility preferences of management okay so as i as i told you that whenever you change the discount rate of course the npv also changes okay because there is an inverse relationship with with npv uh, the discount rate and npv are indirectly related okay so whenever you change the discount rate of course the npv also changes and it really depends on the preferences of the management as well some management management depending of course on the circumstances of the company but also it's like a personality specific uh, uh, thing some some managers may be more risk seeking okay and some one may be a risk a worse okay so let's say one manager is more risk seeking and the other one is more risk uh, averse okay and some of them are let's say risk neutral in chapter number 5 if you remember that research actually tells us that most of us like as an individual even in our daily lives we are risk averse okay so it really depends on the risk attitudes of of the management okay and what 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 we call preferences as well okay so for example let's say this is firm portfolio approach okay so this is standard deviation on horizontal axis and on the vertical axis we have expected value of npv so this is expected value okay expected it's like an expectation okay so if you see here these in different curves and i'm sure you you may remember from your microeconomics course okay on each point of this in different curve the management is actually in different 
Okay, but if you see, let me let me take you to the next slide, and then you can see. Okay, if you see these indifference curves, the first one, the slope is very very sharp. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, here, the slope has a little bit flattened out. So if I see here. These individuals are high in risk averse. These are very, very risk averse individuals. OK, so even for a smaller change. So for example, this one for a smaller change. OK, and what is, by the way, standard deviation? Standard deviation is risk. Remember from chapter number five for uh, awesome? uh, Yes, sir, I remember. Perfect. OK, so this is risk. So if I plot actually. OK, although my 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 drawing is bad, but you can see visually actually. That for a smaller change for a smaller upward revision uh, in 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 uh, standard deviation, I need a higher compensation and I need a higher compensation because I'm risk averse. I do not like risk. So let's say if you change the risk, I need a higher return. OK. So those individuals may actually choose this project, project A. OK, but what if let's say uh, the individuals who are evaluating projects, they are moderate in the risk, risk aversion. OK, so the risk aversion is a little bit low compared to like the, the, the first uh, scenario. OK, so as you can see, the indifference curves are a little bit flattened out. OK, and. For example. If I change the risk, OK, I relatively I need a smaller compensation compared to those individuals who are high in risk aversion. OK. Although the drying, I, it, it doesn't do justice to whatever I'm saying, but you can see actually from the slope of these indifference curves. Okay, so those individuals may actually chose project B based on that. Okay, we go to let's say a third scenario where the risk aversion is low. Okay, so these, in other words, are risk seeking individuals. OK, so they are looking for a high return. Sorry for, for higher uh, risk. Right, so even for a higher risk, OK. Although their expected return, like compared to point B and point A, it's higher, but the difference itself is low. OK, so even for a higher uh, increase in risk, I do not need a higher compensation in terms of expected Okay? Okay. Somebody's not happy, I think. Okay, anyways. Uh, so these individuals are more risk seeking. So as you can see, they will end up choosing a project which will give a high return compared to B and A, OK? But if you see for a higher, uh, I mean, for, 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 for a larger increase in risk, they do not need a higher compensation necessarily, OK? So that's the point. So adjusting beta for financial leverage, OK? Uh, beta for any individual, let's say, project uh, or group project, OK? What do you do? Initially, you consider an unlevered uh, beta. OK, so. As, if you remember okay. from my last lecture. The assumption is that. All equity financing. OK, so you are actually trying to finance the project. Based on mm -hmm. all equity, right? And then you do some adjustments. OK, uh, B divided by S. OK, this should be actually D divided by S. Anyways, OK, so debt and stockholders equity. OK, so 
debt to equity ratio, okay, in market values, by the way, okay, and TC is the corporate uh, tax rate. And I'll show you how do we use uh, this adjusted present value approach, okay. There is another approach, it's called adjusted present value approach. So the first one, we were managing the net present value. Okay, so can we please mute uh, all mics except Azams? Okay, because it's creating a little bit of uh, disturbance. Okay, so adjusted present value is the sum of the discounted value of the project operating cash flows plus the value of any tax yield. Benefit of the interest associated with the project financing minus any flotation cost. Okay, so if you remember, I told you in chapter number 13 that debt, the benefit is it acts as a tax sheet. Okay, so financial leverage, it's good for your company, but of course, you have to find a good balance of debt and equity. Okay, too much high debt is not good because your company becomes more and more risky. Too less of debt is also not good because you need an optimal, what they call financial leverage to get maximum benefit out of the debt financing, okay? Because it's like a tax shield. And I'll tell you in the coming slides that why debt is important, let's say, as, as for financing different projects, okay? Or even, let's say, if you would like to uh, show, I mean, to maintain a certain level of debt on your balance sheet, it's good. So APV, the adjusted present value is unlevered project value plus value of project financing. And I'll, I'll give you actually a numerical example. So suppose basket funders is considering a new machine. It's a basket weaving machine, right? It will cost $425,000, okay? It will save $1,000 per year for the next six years. The required rate on unlevered equity is 11%. So the unlevered equity beta is, oh, sorry, this is the rate, okay? So BW can borrow $180,000 at 7%, which is $10,000 after tax, with $10,000 after flotation cost. So of course we have to take the flotation cost uh, into equation, right? How do we do that? If you remember flotation cost, we either adjust our um, initial cash outlay or what is the second one, Adam, do you remember? Um, sir, I just lost you, uh, can you repeat? Okay, so in order to take the flotation cost into account. Yes, sir. Sir, pitch okay. slide up, dobara par denge? explain kar denge? Uh, this slide? Okay, yeah. Uh, so basket one. Pichli wali. This one? Isse pichli wali. This one? Nee, nee. Isse pichli wali, sir. Yeh wali. This one. This one? Nee, internet slow. Next one. Yeh, NPV and AVP example se pehli wali. Yes, this one. Adjust this one, okay. Present value. Okay. So, I'm sure you're okay with NPV. So NPV is the net Hello? present value of any project. Yes, I can hear you, yeah? Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm very cut. I don't understand. Okay. Azam, can you hear me without any interruption? Uh, yes, sir. I'm having no problems. Okay. So this may be something actually on your side. Maybe it's uh, internet. Okay. But let me try to explain it again, okay? So net present value does not take into account, uh, let's say the tax yield benefits, okay? So let's say if I'm using uh, debt to finance, let's say uh, a project, it does not take into account the tax benefits, okay? So what do we do? We adjust actually our present values and then we take into consideration the tax benefits, okay, associated with debt financing. And then we also take into account the flotation cost. So let's say if you are raising extra capital, raising additional capital, 
And why do we need additional capital? Because you are considering to start a new project, right? You need capital for that, okay? So let's say if you are raising additional capital, sometimes, I would say most of the times, they come with flotation costs. So in order to raise those capitals, you need to spend some money, okay? Like the printing cost and let's say brokerage fees and stuff like that, <coughs> okay? So to give you an example, suppose basket, basket Funders is considering to undertake a project that would like to buy an automated basket weaving machine, right? The cost of that machine is $425,000, okay? The saving that it will bring to the company is $1,000. So what I'm thinking that this machine would be efficient, okay? And it will save $100,000 per year for the company, okay? For the next six years, the required rate on unlevered equity is 11%, okay? Basket wonders can borrow $180,000 at 7% for $10,000 after tax rotation cost. Principal is repaid $30,000 per year plus interest, okay? The firm's tax bracket is 40%. Now, do not please get intimidated by all these numbers. Once I simplify it for you in the next uh, few slides, uh, you will actually get uh, the whole message, okay? So the first, first thing first, what is the NPV of an all equity financed firm, okay? So if you see, NPV is $100,000 and then present value interest factor annuity. So if you remember, it said that it will save $100,000 <coughs> each year for six years. Okay, so put a timeline. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this one is like an annuity, right? So you have to discount. So this is like the benefit. Okay, so this is benefit. And this is cost of the project. Okay, so of course, in PV is, of course, I have to discount all the cash inflows minus the 425, which is the initial investment cash outlay, okay? So if I consider the conventional NPV approach, of course, this project is not feasible. Agreed? So this project is not accepted. Why? Because NPV is less than zero. Is it clear, uh, Azam? Uh, yes, sir, it's clear. Yeah. So the on unlevered beta is actually 11% here and then 6% here, okay? So you can easily get this number, okay? The PVIFA, which is present value interest factor annuity from the table. Now, how do we implement the APV approach, which is the adjusted present value, okay? First thing first again, okay? you have to calculate the interest expense. And why do we need it? Because interest itself, it acts as a tax sheet, okay? So in order to get an idea about the tax savings, my first task is to calculate the interest expenses, okay? So year number one interest is, borrowing is $180,000 and the rate is 70%. So 180,000 multiplied by 7% is 12,600, okay? 10,500, all these numbers, okay? Next step, of course, you have to calculate the tax yield benefits for each, okay? What is the tax rate? 40%, okay? So these are your tax savings on due to debt financing. So let's say if you are financing your project all with equity, you do not get this benefit. You do not get the savings, okay? You are saving this money because of the interest expense, okay? So first, calculate interest expense for each year. Second, calculate the tax yield. Third, calculate the PVs of the tax yield, okay? Because this one is at the end of first year, this tax saving, this saving is at the end of second year. So of course I have to discount it, okay? 
So after discounting, gear point 901 is the discount factor. This is for second year discount factor, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and so on, okay? So the present value of all tick savings is actually submission of all. So add all of them and you get 13,530, okay? So in order to get the adjusted present value, we have to calculate the present value of the tax benefits. Straight, simple, okay? So what is APV now, okay? So it's the NPV plus PV of tax shield minus the flotation cost, okay? So NPV, if you remember from one of my slides, the NPV was 1,946, but negative. That's why we rejected the project, okay? So if we are using only the NPV approach, of course, we would have rejected the project, right? But let's say if I'm considering to raise $180,000 to debt, okay? So $180,000 to debt, okay? And debt, of course, comes with interest expense, okay? And because of this interest expense, we get some savings on taxes. Okay? So these are tax savings. Okay? What is the present value of those tax savings? 13,513. And then the flotation cost is minus $10,000. Okay? Once I take into account the present value, benefit of the taxes, and the flotation cost, my APV, which is the adjusted present value, is 1,567. Now the whole picture changed. Based on NPV, I would have rejected the project. Based on the adjusted present value, now I do not have any reason to reject it. So this one will be accepted. Why? Because APV is greater than zero, it's positive. Okay, so I will stop here and I hope today's question uh, I mean, the numerical question was not that difficult. It's super easy. Uh, the topic itself is very logical. I will open the floor now. If you have any questions, please unmute yourself and feel free to ask me those questions. Uh, so you to take the attendance. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, uh, Azam. Yeah, you're welcome, sir. Okay. जो NPV और APV की एग्जांपल थी वो दोबारा से एक्सप्लेन कर दें प्लीज मैं कर लेता हूं ठीक है ओके लेट मी ओके हाउ दिस एंड हु इज दिस आई एम सॉरी आई कोडंट रिकॉग्नाइज यू फ्रॉम योर वॉइस मुबशिर मुबशिर ओके थैंक यू मुबशिर ओके लेट्स सी सर आवाज बहुत कट रही है आपकी अह and Mubashir, is it only you or Azam? Do you see any, do you also experience any disturbance on my side? Uh, sir, I'm not having any issues. Uh, maybe it's a uh, region issue. Achha, uh, uh, sir, Awas Badi Katri Aapki. No, Awas Katri Aapki, but it's that Azam actually confirmed it that this is not something from my side, so maybe your internet is weak. Probably. Yeah, I'm so sorry for that. This is something I cannot help, actually. So, uh, do you want me to explain the NPV part as well? Okay. So, let's see. So, Basket Wonders actually is considering to buy a weaving machine, okay? The machine will cost $425,000, okay? And the proposal on the table is that the basket wonders will spend $180,000. I mean, they will raise this capital uh, through borrowing. So they will borrow $180,000, okay? But in order to borrow that money, okay? and raise that capital, they have to spend $10,000. So this is the flotation cost, okay? The principal needs to be paid $30,000 per year plus interest, okay? And the firm has a 
40% tax rate. Now, the saving that this machine will bring to the company is $100,000 per year. Okay, <coughs> so yes, they will spend $425,000, but the benefit is the company will save $100,000 per year. So if I asked you that, is this project feasible? Of course, we have to make a decision and we have to use some techniques. So if I, if I use MPV technique, okay? So if you can see, I plotted all the cash flows. I mean, the, 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 the savings from this machine on a timeline. So year number one, they are saving $100,000. Similarly, year number two, they are saving $100,000, okay? Year number $300,000. OK, so the first thing you need to do is to calculate the NPV. And how do I do that? First of all, I have to calculate the present value of all these cash flows. OK, and since this one is a typical annuity, $100,000. OK, so you multiply it with the present value in uh, interest factor annuity. OK. The parameter is 11% in six years, okay? And then you have to subtract the initial cash outlay, okay? So this is the project investment that you need, okay? So the present value of all the benefits that the company will get from this machine is $423,054 minus 425. So the NPV is minus 1,946. So Using the concepts that we learned in chapter number 13, if NPV is negative, you reject it, okay? So if we use this criteria, we will reject this project. But of course, there is another approach, what we call adjusted present value. So there are two adjustments, two adjustments in this situation, okay? So two adjustments. One adjustment is, tax savings, so I have to adjust for tax savings and flotation cost. Okay. So how do I calculate tax savings? Sorry, say it again. Share screen is not visible. Uh, I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Azim, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, we, I think, lost him. Okay, so let me, let me finish it. So the first thing, tax savings, right? For tax savings, the first step is calculate, calculate interest expenses, okay? Interest expenses each year, okay? So we did that. The second step is calculate the tax yield. So tax yield, how do you do that? Interest expenses, you multiply it by the tax rate. Okay, so these are your tax savings. Okay, the third step is calculate the present value of those tax savings, okay, and add them. So the present value of the tax savings is 13,513. And if I plug the numbers, so, APV is actually the net present value plus the tax saving part minus the flotation cost. So if I plug all the numbers in, my APV is positive 1,567. And since APV is positive, now I will accept this project. Okay, so the whole purpose of the exercise is that debt financing actually saves you some money. And in order to uh, decide whether a project is feasible or not, you have to take into account those tax savings. Uh, so the, the capital structure actually plays an important role uh, whether a project is accepted or rejected. Okay, did I answer your question? Azam, what do you think? Did I answer his question? Uh, yes, sir, I think you answered it. Okay, perfect. Any other question? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, too. what is your progress on uh, project? 
any concerns because the deadline is after eight days. And my expectation is if you manage your time well, I expect you to uh, submit that assignment by 11th so that I mean you do not have to rush at the 11th hour. OK. Yes, uh, OK, uh, please give me one second. Let me let me clarify one more thing and then I can take your question. The other thing is please submit only one file. And that to CMS. OK, so if you make a mistake, let's say upload a wrong file, you cannot actually undo the whole process and then you have to email that uh, that uh, report to me. OK, so I do not want that. OK, mm. so please submit only one file. Of course, you have to do your calculations in Microsoft Excel. OK, what you can do easily, you can actually copy that table and paste it, let's say in your report. OK, so follow all the instructions that I already laid out uh, uh, in the project in the I mean in the in, in the project. Please follow all the instructions. Only one report. OK, and let me reemphasize. No late submissions will be allowed. OK, so I did not allow any late submission for the assignment and I will not allow any late submission for this project as well. OK, uh, I understand that you may have some other subjects, uh, but please manage your time. Uh, come up with a quality report, so I will really, really appreciate if you Let's say submitted by deadline, ideally by June 11, not 12. Okay, sorry. What was uh, your question, sir? Question in the actually, you have muted me in this conversation. Mein mute kiya hai, so I cannot write my attendance over there. I cannot type it. No attendance. I have done. What do you say? I actually what what is called downloaded it. So. मैं डाउनलोड कर सकता हूं यहां से एक क्लिक के साथ सो यू डू नॉट हैव टू राइट योर अटेंडेंस यू डू नॉट हैव टू डू दैट या इफ यू आर ऑनलाइन ठीक है वो यहां पे डाउनलोड हो जाएगा ठीक है सर ठीक है एक चीज प्लीज कीप इन माइंड ठीक है यहां पे हम एज अ टीचिंग फैकल्टी बिल्कुल इस चीज के लिए बैठे नहीं है कि मतलब आप लोगों को हम माइक्रो मैनेज करें ठीक है छोटी छोटी चीजों के लिए बताने की भाई अटेंडेंस ठीक है यू आर ऑल ग्रोन अप ठीक है यू अंडरस्टैंड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ अटेंडेंस ठीक है अटेंडेंस की ये इंपॉर्टेंस और कोई नहीं है अटेंडेंस की इंपॉर्टेंस सिर्फ ये है कि जो चीज मैं टीच कर रहा हूं ठीक है वो आप लर्न कर रहे हैं जैसे ठीक है अगर आप लर्न नहीं कर रहे ठीक है अगर आप लेट से अटेंशन पे नहीं कर रहे तो अटेंडेंस वर्सेज नो अटेंडेंस वुड बी इसेंशियली द सेम थिंग Is that fair? ठीक है सर ठीक है देखें आप आप लोग अच्छी खासी मतलब इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं इस डिग्री में ठीक है योर पेरेंट्स आर ऑल एक्साइटेड कि आप लोग कामयाब हो जाएं ठीक है इंस्टीट्यूट इज पेइंग मी अ गुड सैलरी आई वुड से पुअर सैलरी बट अ गुड सैलरी ठीक है डिसेंट सैलरी ठीक है ताकि मैं आप लोगों को टीच करूँ एंड इट्स नॉट अबाउट द सैलरी टू बी ऑनस्ट यू ठीक है आई लाइक इंटरेक्शन विद माई स्टूडेंट्स ठीक है तो ये है कि इट्स 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 इट इज समथिंग दैट आई 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 एम डूइंग इट लाइक व्हाट्स इट्स कॉल्ड पूरे सेटिस्फैक्शन के साथ ठीक है तो आप लोग प्लीज इस चीज को मतलब ये ना समझे बर्डन ना समझे कि यार अटेंडेंस होनी चाहिए नहीं होनी चाहिए दिस एंड दैट ठीक है आप इस चीज को एंजॉय करें इस पूरे लर्निंग प्रोसेस को आप लोग एंजॉय करें ठीक है एनी अदर क्वेश्चन एनी अदर एक्साइटिंग थिंग दैट यू वुड लाइक टू शेयर no sir okay anyone else khuda hafiz <laughs> okay allah hafiz then i'll take it uh, as a no uh, please stay safe theek hai ghar pe rahe zyada bahar nikalne ki zarurat nahi hai kyunki i think abhi bhi kafi matlab ye hai ki issues aa rahi hain pakistan mein cases report ho rahi hain theek hai stay safe apne kaam pe focus kare and uh, If you have any questions or any concerns, ah, so मेरे साथ शेयर करें WhatsApp ग्रुप पे ठीक है ईमेल कर लें ठीक है ah I wish you all the best.
एंड इनशाला आल सी यू अच्छा एक और चीज अब हमारे तीन लेक्चर रह गए ठीक है सिर्फ तीन लेक्चर रह गए वट आल डू आल डू समी प्रॉब्लम आई विल रिकॉर्ड दम एंड आई विल शेयर दैट लेक्चर टूमोरो ठीक है फॉर द लास्ट टू लेक्चर Okay. Wednesday's lecture will be synchronous. It will be live. Okay, sir. So we'll be having okay. our, in our two Wednesday okay. instead of Thursday. Instead of Thursday. Or what I can do, I can actually let's say uh, give you a break on Wednesday, and then then we can do it on Thursday. It's up to you. Okay. Sir. Okay. Let me make the decision. Let's not make it confusing. Okay. So uh, my schedule. Okay. So Wednesday it is. Okay, so Wednesday okay. we will have live session. Okay. Okay, so Wednesday tenth uh, June. Okay. Uh, Wednesday no. Yes, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yes, tenth of June at three o'clock. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention and all the best. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, sir. Allah Hafiz. You are Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.